and now you got a testimony. You know why God will put you on a rock? See, a rock is a little higher. That's a platform. He puts you on a platform so now you can tell your testimony of what the Lord has done. I'm here to let you know, God didn't lift you up to keep it to yourself. Now, let me say it again. He didn't protect you to keep it to yourself. He didn't bless you. He didn't provide for you. He didn't heal you for you to keep it to yourself. No, God wants you to tell it. Hallelujah. Man. Oh, man. I'm going to tell the band to go ahead and take it down a little bit because I want to I wanna get into the sermon. Praise God. Amen. I'm losing my voice a little bit this morning. So I'm not sure how long, how long a voice I'm going to have, but praise the Lord. God is good. Now, we want to go ahead and get into the word of the Lord. Listen, we're back. We've been preaching and teaching through the book of Matthew, just going line by line, verse by verse. We left off at verse 31 on last week. So and with that, that sermon, you got to have 20 10, that's better than poor perfect. 2010 faith, amen. You gotta, have, you gotta have a faith that sees, amen, beyond the normal and sees into the supernatural. You can have 2020 regular vision, but you need 2010 faith. That's better, amen, than 2020. You, can, you wanna see the possibilities. You wanna see what God is able to do. You wanna see it and be persistent and patient, trusting God is able, amen, to fix and do anything because there's nothing too hard for God. That was on last we picked we picked up uh we left off at verse 31 jesus is still in the miracle working business amen he's still doing miracles and we want to look at this verse it says uh and and they they while they were going out verse 32 a man who was demon possessed and could not talk was brought to jesus and when the demon was driven out the man uh, who was mute began to speak and the crowd was amazed and saying nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. I want to minister from the subject when the, the, the enemy wants to silence you. Uh, write that down. Put that in the check. The, the, the enemy wants to silence you. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. And we come to you, Lord, with a very simple request that you give us an anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Speak, Holy Spirit. Give us everything that we need in this moment. Give us the wisdom. Give us the revelation. Give us the understanding. Speak now, Lord. We need to hear from you. Forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us for all unrighteousness. Prepare our hearts and minds, Lord, to hear and receive from you, Lord. Move me out of the way so your divine and holy word can be heard. Speak, Father, now in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to minister from the subject today, the enemy wants to silence you. Beloved, you got to understand your voice is in important. Your voice matters. The articulation of your feelings, the articulation of what's going on on the inside, spoken to, on to the outside, is important. Whether you, people want to hear about you or know about you, I need you to understand that your voice matters. Your voice is important. Who you are and your, the articulation of who you are is extremely important. And beloved, uh, the enemy wants to steal your voice. The enemy already knows. And I'm talking about the enemy. I'm talking about Satan, his demons, and all of his minions. They, they know how powerful and strong God created you. They know that God created you with greatness. They know that God has a special plan for your life. They know that God uh, has ordained you to do something and change this world. They know that God has put gifts and talents in you. They know that God wants to use you and, you, and, and do great things through you. And because the enemy knows that, the enemy wants to silence you. The enemy wants uh, to to shut you down. The enemy wants to keep you from making any noise. That, that is not just a tactic of the, of the demonic. That's a normal tactic even in war. It's nothing. They want to silence uh, They want to silence the opposition. They, they don't want to hear from the other side. That's, that's always a, a strategy of an enemy, amen, to silence you. And, and beloved, our enemy is the enemy of our souls, amen. The enemy of our souls knows that God has placed something in us 
us that God wants to get out of us. And an enemy of our souls wants to silence us and, and keep us from being used by God and keep us from going forward in the things that God has for us. The enemy wants to silence us. It is a warfare strategy, a, you know, a, a design of the opposition to limit what you're able to say, limit what you're able to vocalize and steal your voice and silence you because the enemy knows if he can silence you, you will suffer in silence. The enemy knows that if he silences you, he can take away your voice. The enemy knows that if he silences you, you will become frustrated and upset and discouraged. There's nothing more frustrating when you want to say something but can't. You ever been to the hospital and somebody's got a thing in their throat and they aren't used to not speaking and then they're trying their best to communicate. I remember when I went to see my friend, uh, praise God, he is doing well now, but he couldn't speak and he was paralyzed. And Amen. He would try to articulate with, with sounds and grunts, but he knew he couldn't speak and, it, it, and I knew he knew I couldn't understand. And so I, I don't know if he was in pain. I don't know what he was dealing with. I know if he was thirsty because he couldn't move his hand and he could use his voice and the frustration and the pain on his face. I will never forget because he had the disease it had, had silenced him. It had robbed him, amen, of being able to articulate what was going on and what he was feeling. And because, beloved, your voice is important. That's even why when we talk about the struggles for justice and the struggle, they want to silence the voices that speak of freedom. That's why they kill a king. That's why they kill the civil rights leaders, amen. They, they kill them because they wanted to silence their voices. And beloved, that's always been a strategy of the enemy to silence us. And, and oftentimes we're silenced and, and robbed of our voices. Uh, and we had, But I'm here to let you know God wants to bring your voice back and, and give you a voice. And so many things silence us. Amen. And sometimes it's not just demonic things that silence us. Amen. Some people are silenced because of trauma. Amen. They, they've been traumatized so bad they don't want to say anything about about it. Uh, some folk have been abused and don't want, they've been abused so bad they don't want to talk about it. They, they've been silenced. The abuse has silenced them. The trauma has silenced them. Sometimes it's a mental health issue or anguish. They don't know how to say what they're feeling. They don't, they don't think the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to be silent. That's why I had to tell folk, amen, one of the best things you can do sometimes is go to therapy and talk out your problems because, amen, oftentimes talking out your issues, amen, will help you fix the issue and deal with the issue and get past the issue and work through the issue. But a lot of times folk are dealing with stuff, what is going on, they're, they're not talking about it. They are silent about it. They've been muted by their pain, muted by frustration, muted by trauma, muted by all sorts of stuff. They've been silenced, and beloved, not the, it, the enemy knows silencing us. Uh, silencing someone is a technique to keep them from being used by God. Uh, here in, in the text, amen, we, we run across the man. It's only two verses, but he's been silenced. Oftentimes, uh, the focus on the text is the demon possessed. The, uh, the focus on the text is, is the demon oftentimes. But during this week, uh, the Lord had, had put it on my heart. Don't focus on so much of the demon, but focus on what the demon was doing. Uh, well, what did the demon do? The demon had silenced the man. Uh, uh, you got to look at that. Again. Hold on now. Why would the demon want to silence him? Amen. Uh, well, well, what's the important? Because the, the demon knows this man's voice matters. What this person has to say is important. Uh, and the enemy, uh, that's what, that's the enemy, one of the enemy's goals is to silence us, to keep us from talking about what's going on, to talk about what we're dealing with, or talk about what we know. The enemy knows if he can silence you, he can stop you. Oh, uh, that, that's been a technique, and I'm here to let you know God wants you to get your voice back. I was going to tie that in my sermon, but I, I said that, but, but I'm going to give you that. Said, God wants you to have your voice back. Amen. I, I don't know where the enemy tried to silence you, but God wants your voice back. You ever been in a situation where you feel you couldn't talk? You, you, you couldn't talk, and you were, you, you were fearful to say what you had to say because you didn't know how things folk were going to respond. God wants you to speak up. God wants you to get your, want to get your voice back. God want, cause God didn't want you to be silent. Here, notice it. The demon, and this is not the last time in the, in the scriptures where that's where you see it. The demon had caused this man who was physically able to talk to not be able to talk. What caused you to be so silent? 
Well, 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 this enemy has robbed this man of his voice. And Bubba, we got to, I need, that, that, that spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me clearly because, I, you know, I had seen some stuff. And I, I, I had been talking to, amen, a family. And, I, and I've been talking to some folk going through some mental health challenges. And, and one of the things, I, and one of my buddies on, I was talking to online, and he was just talking to me how he was just afraid to talk about it. The situation had muted him. And instead of talking about it and having a voice about it, he just suffered in silence. Some kept telling him, you can't talk about it. Some kept telling him, you, he, nobody, you can't talk about this, this feeling because you know, he, he, something in him was telling him, don't say nothing. And it wasn't until he started talking that he got his breakthrough. And so, and at that moment, I read this text and I saw, what did the demon do? It shut this man up. And then the Lord just spoke to me, you got to tell folk, get their voice back. The enemy's tried to shut you up. You don't want to talk. You don't want to speak. You don't want to say nothing. You don't want to speak up because something is telling you don't talk about it. And beloved, the enemy oftentimes wins when we're silent. The enemy oftentimes wins because we don't say anything. And I, let me just talk, just us sometimes even personally, you, only, you know you should say something. But the enemy has convinced you to hit the mute button. And I need you to unhit that button now in your life. Let me help somebody. Somebody been in, through some trauma. You've been through something. And some telling you, don't say nothing. Beloved, that's the worst thing you can do right now, probably. You probably need to go say, look, you probably need to get that out. Let's take a look at the text. They, the Bible says that he was, the demon-possessed man was brought to Jesus. One of the first ways of, of being able to unsilence yourself is you need some friends around you. See, these friends knew now if the demon had possessed this guy and he wasn't causing no problems, they wouldn't have brought him, but he couldn't speak. And it wasn't until the, the, the man began to speak that everybody is amazed. So the, this brother being muted was the big deal here. And, but these men, they knew they could not Watch this. They knew they were not strong enough to get fix this man's problem, but they were willing to take him to somebody who they thought could fix their problem. Let me help you here. Uh, you, you need some folk around you that know that you need more than what they can handle and are willing to take you to somebody who has a track record of fixing problems. Here, I'm trying to help somebody today. Let me be a friend to you. You need therapy. You need to talk to somebody. You need some, but every now and then you need some friends that are going to take you to somebody and beloved, you may know somebody that needs to get something off their chest. I need you to be a friend to them and help them get to somebody amen, that can do more. You can listen to them, but they need to be delivered. You can listen to them, but they need more help than you have. You can listen to them, but your kind words of encouragement aren't enough. You you need to get them to somebody that can help them get their voice back. Sometimes, amen, you need to take them to the church, amen, for them to get that spiritual deliverance. But every time somebody is muted, it's not a demon. It's trauma. It's pain. It's mental anguish. If it's a spiritual problem, God bless you. Bring them to the church. We can handle that. Amen. But if it's not a spiritual problem, but they're muted, amen, because sometimes demons show up as mental illness. Sometimes demons show up as trauma and pain, amen, and that, and that requires, amen, spiritual and practical solutions to deal with this. But here in this text, these, these friends, they bring this man because they realize they don't, but they know Jesus can, and they bring this man looking for a miracle because the demon has 
has muted this man, and these friends know your voice is important. Amen. That this you can't let this thing silence you. You some of us need to be friends to folk and say, you can't let that thing silence you. You can't let that thing mute you. God's got a plan for your life. And as long as you keep holding that in, it's gonna be the devil is gonna have the victory in your life, and we're not gonna let the devil have the victory in your life. So we're gonna do what we have to do to unmute it. I praise God for some friends. Praise God for some friends that brought this man to Jesus. Uh, and now the text, now oftentimes Jesus has a conversation with the demons. He has a discussion with the demons. Not all sorts of, that none of that is recorded in this text. All is recorded is when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute began to speak. The Bible then says this thing. He says, the crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Let me help you here. You getting your voice back is going to bring praise and honor and glory to God. Let me help you. You need to get your voice back. Because God wants to use you to bring glory to the Most High, to lead and draw people to Christ. Why can't you be silent? Because the enemy knows that the moment you begin to start talking, God's going to get glory. The enemy knows the moment you, you, you get your voice back, amen, the demons got to run. They, are, they already know the moment you get your voice back, folk going to be praising God, honoring God, running to Jesus. They don't want you to have your voice back. The enemy wants you to be silent and suffer and be alone and be at home. But God says, no, I'm trying to free you up today. I'm trying to loose you today. I'm trying to set you free today. I'm trying to deliver you today because God has a plan for your life. Your voice matters. Too many folk are suffering in silence. They don't think that what they have is important. They don't think that what they can do is important. They don't think that what they can say is important. But that's the enemy trying to convince you. You are you don't don't matter. Your voice doesn't count. But beloved, let me tell you, God's put something on the inside. The enemy's trying to block it. But if you just let God have your life and let and put your hand in God's hand and say, God, give me my voice back. God, let me speak. Let me be used. Be, I'm not going to be muted anymore. God can do something marvelous in your life. So much so, folk will say, we've never seen this like anything like this before. I've never seen God use anybody. I've never seen somebody speak like you speak. God wants you to get your voice back because the goal of the demon was to mute this man. And when, as soon as the demon is driven out, this man begins to speak, beloved. Oh, I need you to get your voice back. Too many years silent when God says, I've got something that I want you to, I want to use you I'm going to use you. I want to do great things through you. Get your voice back. All you got to do is get to Jesus. That's the good news. Get to Jesus. God will then direct you and show you what other things you might need to do to get your voice back. But I'm here to let you know it starts with a relationship with God. Because you really want God in your life. You really want God in your life. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, for anyone in the sound of my voice who felt like they've been silenced, felt like they've been muted, felt like uh, the enemy has, has caused them to just shut down. But, but praise God, Lord, I know, Lord, you are a deliverer. You are a healer, Lord. Help somebody to get their voice back. Hallelujah. Set them free in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, even through the internet, Lord, right now somebody's getting free pray right now somebody's getting delivered somebody's getting set free right now in jesus name somebody on your job tried to silence you somebody at your house tried to silence you somebody in your neighborhood tried to silence you and you and, and you've been silent amen and, and you, you've been you've been shut down you've been silently suffering but god says no longer no longer no longer he's trying to set you free today hallelujah and some of us need to be friends to those who've been shut down and shut out to help them get their voice back some of us need to be friends to help those that have been silent get their voice back. Speak to us right now in the name of Jesus. 
Now, Lord, if there's someone on the side of my voice that does not know you as Savior and Lord, that today would be the day where they would come to you and give their life to Christ. Today would be the day where they say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Today would be the day where they say, Lord, come into my life. Save my soul. Give me my voice back, Lord. Lord, give me my purpose back. Give me, yeah, Lord, help me to walk into your plan and, and walk into the priority that you have for my life. Lord, speak to someone's heart, Lord, right now and move in them right now to drive the demons out, to drive the things out that are in their lives that have silenced them. God, give somebody their voice back right now in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, amen. Beloved, if you need to get your life, give your life to Christ, call us right now, 804-232-5124. Our ministers are going to the phones as I speak. Amen. Give us a call if you are ready to join our church, 804-232-5124. If you're ready to join our church, you can give us a call right now. Amen. If you need prayer call, they will speak to you and minister to you. Amen. It is our third Sunday, and on our third Sunday, we do two things. We celebrate our covenant with one another, amen, and then we read, then we do the communion celebration. I'm going to ask our media team to go ahead and put the uh, church covenant up on the screen, and then we're going to read that together. Let's read together. Having been led, as we believe by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another. As one body in Christ, we engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its worship, prosperity, and spirituality, to sustain its ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to speak to the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deployment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the illegal sale and excessive use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, seek God's help in abstaining from all practices, which bring unwarranted harm to the body or jeopardize our own or others' faith, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and in courtesy in speech, and to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage when we move from this place. We will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, be power and glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. It is Communion Sunday, so I'm going to ask now, if you're at home, go ahead and get you uh, some sort of beverage and, and some sort of bread product. Amen. As we prepare for our communion celebration, I'll give you a minute to do that as we prepare. Remember that the communion celebration is not necessarily about whether the bread or, or the wine or the juice, but it is really about a reminder that the Lord is inside of us and that it's our duty to live for him, to honor him. When they did the, that last meal, that last supper, it was a, probably a Passover meal. That meal was about God saving, God redeeming, and God letting judgment pass over you. And so we come to 
the communion table, and it's a reminder that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It is a reminder that even though we deserve death, God passed over us. He allowed his judgment to pass over us and allow his mercy, his mercy to land on us. That's a good, that's a blessing right there. So it's not about the bread or the juice, but it's a reminder that God allowed judgment to pass when we deserve judgment, but allowed us to receive mercy. That's the celebration right there. So when we come to the communion table, it's not about the bread or the juice, but it's about your heart and your mind, your attitude, about coming humbly and saying, Lord, cleanse me and forgive me, make me brand new, prepare my mind and heart to serve you. If there's anything I did wrong, let me correct it. If there's anything I need to fix, let me take care of that. If there's someone I need to say I'm sorry to or apologize to, let me do that because God, you forgave me. And we must forgive one another. Amen. And if we've done wrong, we've got to be quick to make amends. Amen. Because we, we receive mercy. See, when you know you receive mercy, you know you've got to give mercy. Amen. And you know you have to ask for forgiveness. And so that's, that's the attitude. So it's more about not the juice and bread so much, but it's more about our mindset and our attitude and our perspective and realizing that we needed mercy and we needed grace. God should have just tossed us all out. But God said, no, I'm redeeming. God, I'm going to keep you. But I'm gonna give you and I'm going to give you mercy. And so we come to this table with minds and hearts of humility, saying, thank you, Lord, for letting judgment pass over and mercy settle on us. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, we come to you asking you, Lord, to forgive us, to cleanse us, to make us right anew. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of Christ who ultimately washed away all our sins. And we thank you, Lord, that now we are seated in grace. We thank you, Lord, that we're seated in mercy, seated in your kindness. We have a place in your kingdom, not about our own merit, but because of your mercy. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help us prepare our hearts today to receive the communion, to not only be reminded that we have to be in good relationship with you, but be in good relationship with one another. So if there's anything we need to fix or deal with our brother or our sister, let us be quick to do it today to fix it, to make amends, to say we're sorry, to offer forgiveness. Prepare us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, amen. So let's eat and drink together. And he took the bread and gave thanks and said, this is my body that's broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do remember my death until I return. Let us eat the bread. Likewise, he took the cup and poured the wine and said, this is my blood, which is spilled for you. As often as you drink of this, you do remember my death until I return. So let us drink together. And then at the end of the night, they said, amen. And that's how we close out. Amen. Said, Lord, your will be done. Let it be done as you want. And that's the life we have to live. We have to live a life that says amen to God. Amen to God's will and amen to God's way and amen to God's plans. And so today as we say amen, we don't just say amen to close, but we say amen to be a reminder that let's agree with God. Let's honor God and let's serve God every day of our lives. Let's receive the benediction on today. Lord, we say amen to you. We say amen to your plan for our lives. We say amen. Lord, line, help us to continue to line our lives up with you. Lord, we say amen. Amen to you, Lord, to your spirit leading, guiding, directing. So we say amen. We agree. Let your will be done. Let us honor you, Lord, in everything that we do. 
Let us honor you in everything that we say and let us honor you in everything that our hands go to, go to do work on, Lord. Let us honor you, Lord, in our minds and what we think of. Let us honor you with our feet. Everywhere we go, wherever we place our feet, Lord, let us honor you in that place. Now, Lord, God and direct us. Give us wisdom and peace. Speak to us every day, Lord, and allow us to honor your word. Now, Lord, I pray, Lord, again, Lord, for that person that has been silenced by life circumstance, silenced by the enemy. Lord, give them their voice back right now in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Praise God. Don't forget, we come back with bedtime Bible stories this week. Amen. Bible study will return on this week. Praise God. God bless you. We'll look to see you this week. And ushers, 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 remember, ushers need to be in attendance physically in the building on next Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.